Hello and welcome to the Zerto Secure IT series. This session is on securing your data in the AWS cloud, a better together story. Today's webinar is sponsored by Zerto and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Scott Becker. I'm from Actual Tech and I'm excited to be your moderator for this fireside chat style conversation. Now, before we get to today's great content, we have four housekeeping items that will help you get the most out of this session. First off, we want this to be an informative event for you, so we encourage any questions in the questions box in your webinar control panel. Not only will we have team members responding to questions during the live event, but we'll also have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the presentation where we'll discuss in greater detail some of the top questions that you ask. The Q&A panel is also the place to let us know about any technical issues that you might be experiencing. A browser refresh will fix most audio, video, or slide advancement issues, but if that doesn't work, just let us know there in the Q&A and we'll provide further technical assistance. Now, second, in the handout section of your webinar control panel, you'll find that we're offering several resources. I'd especially like to call your attention to a link to get started with Zerto, as well as links to two PDFs. There's one on Zerto for AWS and another one on Zerto in cloud for AWS. So great resources there. I encourage you to access them now and share them with your friends and colleagues. Now third, at the end of this webinar event, we'll be awarding a $250 Amazon gift card to one lucky registrant. Of course, you must be in attendance during the live event to qualify for the prize. Official terms and conditions of today's prize drawing can be found in the handout section. Just scroll to the bottom and you'll find the link with the details there. Now, finally, one of the best benefits of this event is the opportunity to ask a question of our expert presenters. So to help encourage your questions, we have a special additional prize. That's another Amazon gift card, this one for $50 for the best question. After the event is over, we'll look at all the questions that came in, pick out the very best one, and contact that prize winner. Okay, with all that housekeeping out of the way, let's get to today's presentation and, and some demos too. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to our presenters today. We have Bob Floyd, who's Alliance Architect at Zerto, and we have Anthony Dutra, who's Technical Marketing Engineer at Zerto. So let me bring them on video here and get this conversation going. Well, Anthony and Bob, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for letting us come on. Delighted to have you here. So Anthony, I'm gonna start with you. On, on last month's episode, we spent a lot of time discussing security trends and threats to SaaS data. And as we're here today talking about AWS and the cloud, are we seeing those same threats and trends or are there additional threats and trends that we see when talking about the cloud specifically? Yeah, no, that's a really good question, Scott. And I think it's sort of two parts. A, we're still seeing the same problems in trends that you would see in a typical on-premise environment, no matter if it's a virtual machine or even an EC2 instance, you're still susceptible to ransomware attacks, uh, encryption, same exploitations, whether it's um, you know on-premise or being hosted in the public cloud. Um, but we're also seeing a lot of things in terms of lift and shift complexity and costs when it comes to IT spending in the public cloud. Uh, that might not be uh, planned for, right? There's a lot of learning, adopting cloud technologies, having to sort of reappropriate your applications on-premise to a public cloud environment uh, has its uh, downfalls. It, there's some sort of a learning curve uh, and the cost we're actually seeing as well be quite ex uh, extraneous um, if you aren't able to really adapt or have tools available uh, for you to get there quickly. So, right, as a, a IT admin sort of moving to the cloud or seeing that cloud first strategy, you not only have to worry about the day-to-day -day sort of ransomware attacks, what if my environment goes down, um, but, you know, how am I getting to the cloud and how um, am I going to do so as efficiently as possible? Okay. Yeah, just just to, to expand on that a little bit, I mean, I, I think I, we, I actually see a little bit of I don't know, I hesitate to use this term, but I almost see a little bit of uh, uh, naivete, I guess, when it comes to cloud. Yeah. And and there's an assumption, or not with everyone, but with some of the customers that we work with, that cloud is inherently somehow more secure right. than their on-prem environment. You know, oh, I'm moving to cloud, so I don't have to worry about X, Y, and Z. The reality is you still have to worry about X, Y, and Z, no matter where you're deployed, whether it's in your own 
totally controlled data center on premise or whether it's uh, in somebody's public cloud environment, it is still very much your data, your applications are still very much your responsibility. Uh, that shared responsibility model comes into effect for everybody. And just because you've moved to the cloud doesn't mean your data is natively backed up without anything from you uh, or, or protected from ransomware natively, magically, because you're on AWS. They're not, they're not going to, to, to do that for you. So you still have to take some kind of steps to resolve that just as you would if you were running in your own data center, uh, in your own on-premise environment. Excellent, okay. Well, let's talk about the Zerto and, and AWS Better Together story. So how does the, the Zerto and AWS story and solutions address these threats and trends uh, differently? Yes, yeah, so definitely from a Zerto perspective, what has always made us different was our continuous data protection. So what we're able to do is take those virtual instances, whether on-prem or in AWS, and replicate between um, those two environments or even within regions within AWS itself. So we allow for this sort of scalability and flexibility with our you know, tried and true near synchronous continuous data protection. And all of that is automated and orchestrated um, using AWS services and um, tool sets, right? So when we are replicating into AWS uh, with Zerto, we're doing so natively. We're using native EC2 instances. We're having you uh, set up subnets. You're using uh, native cloud resources in order to provision your um, your instances that we're living on-prem in an easy-to-use fashion. And again, you can do the same thing within regions, uh, within uh, AWS as well, uh, replicating those EC2 instances. It could be across the country or across the world. Um, so having that continuous data protection, again, both on-prem and in AWS um, between the two is just huge um, in terms of flexibility. Again, add that Zerto is... Zerto is brilliant as a migration strategy for those oh, customers yes. that are looking at, at moving from their on-prem environment. Uh, you know, we have a lot of customers that are looking to consolidate data centers or maybe even get out of the data center business entirely, right? And move, uh, move anywhere from a small portion to their whole infrastructure uh, up to AWS. Uh, and migration is migration is typically a fairly complicated thing, but with Zerto we can take a lot of the a lot of the the issues uh, and perhaps even some of the cost right out of the process for you. Uh, make it much easier, much simpler, uh, and make it happen significantly faster uh, than pretty much any other any other product on the you know, on the market uh, designed to work specifically within an AWS framework just for that. Uh, migration. Not to say that we don't work equally well for, for DR, if we do, but migration is one of those forgotten strategies that, oh, that people wonder about. And Zerto is very easy for moving your whole virtual machine estate from one place to another. Uh, in this case, specifically from your data center to AWS cloud. Yeah, it uh, so that, that migration story is, is really interesting. It's always, it's always so interesting to hear about things that are, you know, maybe not the, the core, you know, of, of the product, you know, what people think about, but then, you know, just a, a fantastic use case. Mm -hmm. Um, so a, a little birdie has told me that coming very soon, Zerto will be available on the AWS marketplace for migration. So why, why is this a, uh, such a game changer for customers? Man, why is this a game changer for customers? So first of all, it's going to simplify your deployment tremendously well. I mean, that's the, that's the easy, obvious point. I want to hit, I want to spend more time on the, on the not so obvious point, And that is deprecating a customer's committed spend with AWS. Uh, anybody that's planning to do any type of significant work within the AWS cloud infrastructure has probably signed some type of a long-term contract with AWS committing to spend X number of dollars over the course of X amount of time. Um, those figures obviously vary by customer, uh, but Marketplace offers customers that have done that the ability to deprecate or draw down that spend 
by buying a third party cust or third party vendors software through the AWS markets uh, marketplace. Uh, in this case, we're talking about Zerto and and Zerto for migration. Uh, we also have a, a DR solution coming fairly shortly, and we already have uh, Zerto in cloud, which is our AWS to AWS replication strategy, uh, already available in the marketplace publicly today. Uh, so you can log in, buy Zerto, and then reduce the amount of that spend accordingly. Now it's not strictly dollar for dollar. Uh, there are some there are some uh, caveats involved in that. So you can do a hundred percent of the cost of the software up to 25% of your annual committed spend. So to use easy numbers for people to figure out, if you had a million dollar committed spend and you logged in and purchased $250,000 worth of Zerto, that would be a dollar for dollar deprecation against your AWS committed spend. If you purchase $300,000 worth of Zerto, that would be a $250,000 deprecation against your AWS annual committed spend. Um, but I mean, it's a, it's a big boon to customers. You're gonna buy the software anyway. Why not apply that to money you've already committed to spend? And if you're reaching you know, the end of the year, the end of your contract, and you know you're gonna have to write a check for services that maybe you're, you're, you're not gonna pay for, right? Because you've committed to give them the money, let's get something for the money log into Marketplace, and, and you've got an easy way to do that while still improving your security stance, your disaster recovery stance um, with a great product like Zerto. So, did I miss anything, Anthony? No, honestly, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? It's uh, all about being in the cloud is making consumption easy, making it um, you know, easier for you to adopt new technologies like Zerto. It's very good that you have a way to sort of lower that cost in the cloud with known data protection solutions. So I think, I mean, really just hit everything on the head, Bob. That was awesome. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of glossed over how easy deployment is. I want to, want to back up and hit oh. that real quick. So previously, when you wanted to deploy Zerto in in an AWS environment, you would probably spend you know, upwards of a half day on the phone with somebody from Zerto setting up your AWS environment. Um, the marketplace solution is gonna do that for you. It's all automated. Uh, so yeah. it's, a much quicker, uh, it's a much quicker process. Uh, so there's some, there's some savings there too in terms of time to value. <clears throat> Excellent, excellent, all right. Um, and so is the underlying theme of this webinar is security. How does purchasing through the marketplace benefit customers from a security perspective? Man, so uh, on the surface, it may not necessarily look like marketplace is, uh, is a benefit from a security perspective. And this is probably where customers are not completely familiar with what AWS is doing on the back end when they work with us and we work with them to try and get our products listed. AWS is a fairly extensive security process uh, that we have to go through to get a product listed. Uh, in the case of Zerto, our products are all AMI based products. For those that may not be familiar with that acronym, that means Amazon Machine Image. Effectively, it's a fancy way of saying virtual machine. Uh, we're deploying Zerto, uh, in, our, in our case, we're deploying Zerto on a hardened Linux appliance. Uh, so the software comes pre-installed on that appliance and you're going to deploy it. That appliance, that AMI, if you will, has to go through a complete security scan all on its own uh, that AWS puts it through. That is not a Zerto done thing. So, so it's not a case of the, you know, the fox guard in the hen house here, right? Uh, and AWS being, I'll use their phrase, customer obsessed is incredibly hard on us vendors. Uh, to make sure that we're not deploying something that is a potential security risk for them. Uh, they check everything from our password stance on any inherent uh, profiles on the application or on the appliance, uh, all the way through malware that may exist or out of date patches uh, in the appliance itself. All of that comes back in my security report while I am going through the listing process. Uh, then when I go to actually try and list, I submit my cloud formation template. 
again, for you guys that may not be completely up on your AWS uh, uh, nomenclature, CloudFormation template is almost like a deployment script, effectively. It's what's going to auto-deploy all of your AWS resources uh, ahead of time. It's going to set up permissions, build roles, uh, and, as well as ultimately deploy that AMI uh, during the process. That cloud formation template also goes through a fairly significant security scan to determine that we are adhering to AWS's well-architected principle of um, least necessary permission set, right? And I've had I've had my cloud formation template kicked back multiple times, going, "Hey, this you know the permissions in this particular area are too broad. Uh, you have to fix this." Uh, the, you know, just recently I got one back. They, they said, look, you've got one thing that has to be fixed. You've got one thing that we think really ought to be fixed. And one thing that, eh, you're okay, but think about it, right? Think about it. So they're really looking out for, uh, the customer's best interests in terms of, um, security. And if we're really honest, they're also looking out for the customer in terms of, uh, cost. I mean, they look at all of that and then offer suggestions back to us during the listing process around, well, some cases, not suggestions. I mean, I already said it's a requirement to fix X, Y, and Z, and that's always security based, but they will often uh, make additional suggestions above and beyond and go, Hey, look, you don't have to do this, but we're thinking about the customer and this would be a better way to do X, Y, Z. It would be less expensive for the customer to do this X, Y, Z. And, and so there's a long process in getting your product to market with AWS that's designed with the end user in mind, the end user's security and the end user's checkbook. <laughs> nice. No, I agree with that, Bob. It's, it, that's really good. And I think the fact that we are so co-developed with AWS on these things sort of ensures that security really throughout the many different versions as they release, right? You can always obviously, I'm sure... Um, you know, go, go back to other versions, everything security hardened, but I love the fact that they scrutinize down to the cloud formation template. You know, the security group is probably missing this access control or something like this. Mm -hmm. It's, it's designed with security in mind. Um, and that's probably best for your disaster protection, uh, you know, data protection solution. So, uh, yeah. And, I mean, that's just the marketplace. We could, right. you know, we could probably do. Uh, you know, uh, we could extend this significantly and talk about all the time we've spent on the phone with AWS security people while developing the product, even yeah. before the point we get to the marketplace. I know the question was specifically around the marketplace, but but there have been multiple security reviews and architecture reviews for several of, of Zerto's products, as well as time spent on the phone doing deep dive. Hey, what can we what can we? How can we achieve this goal while not compromising someone over here? Uh, and, and AWS has been tremendously helpful in terms of time and resources to get all that stuff done. So right. a lot of things have gone into this before it ever gets to the point of, of a customer using it. Yeah. And because it's built on AWS for AWS, I think even like in the most in the newest releases too, I'm excited about some things, some services that they're using, right? They're always updating their stuff too, and we adapt our architecture with them. So, uh, oh man, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that we can't talk about right now, but future iterations are going to really kind of change the way we look at this thing. All right. Future episode for that one, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. <laughs> So are, are you guys able to show us, uh, you know, real time, the simplicity of, of deploying Zerto for, my, for migrations on the AWS marketplace? Yeah. And I think before we even kick it off, I'd like to kind of set the stage a little bit um, in regards to what a sort of Zerto deployment would look like and what, um, you know, AWS at a very high level when we're connected to it, what it looks like and how that sort of um, operates. So we're uh, basically here in our regular environment. This is our dashboard that we're on. And we have an on-premise environment or a VMware uh, cluster already set up. And we're already protecting some of the VMs in there with Zerto to AWS. So you can see that um, what we've done in our console is already set up what we call the virtual protection group. We told, hey, Zerto, use your continuous data protection to uh, take this turnkey file system here. 
and replicate it to AWS it, just so in the event of um, maybe we want to move it to the cloud, right? We're ready to move this VM to the cloud itself. All we have to do is come down here and click a few buttons to initiate uh, that move overall. And you can see the actual RPO here or um, times that we're uh, able to sort of checkpoint this virtual machine is about six seconds. So it's very quick in terms of um, how we're able to, you know, not, not just restore this virtual machine, um, but also use it and, and migrate it to uh, AWS as well. So um, before we actually show how we go into setting it up in a little bit more detail, I'm going to initiate what's called a failover test. So let's say before you even wanted to migrate to AWS using Zerto, you kind of want to see what it looks like uh, without actually moving it there or shutting anything down. This is the button for you. You click there and click test. You'd select which, again, I already told you, we protected this virtual machine in this group, which one you want to initiate that replication to. Nothing is running in AWS right now. All we did was tell Zerto, hey, you can replicate to there, and this is the point in time I want you to recover to in this group. So we'll tell Zerto to initiate that stuff now. And here's the checkpoint so that journal-based recovery or even um, movement that we've talked about, uh, all the many different six-second check, six checkpoints that you can see that Zerto can roll back this instance to, and we'll actually provision it as an EC2 instance in the AWS cloud um, from this point in time. So extremely flexible. Uh, almost like a DVR-like function, if I could, again, kind of date myself uh, sort of saying that. Uh, you have that very fine level of granularity when it comes to moving or, again, initiating replication, uh, just leveraging Zerto. We click OK and click Next, and then we're going to click that Start uh, Failover Test. And now you, as a IT admin, don't have to do anything. Zerto on the back end is automating and orchestrating a lot of the move from this VM here. Uh, to the AWS public cloud. And I think in order to kind of get that process going, uh, Bob, did you want to show everybody how to sort of get AWS in the public cloud first? Yeah, while that, while that failover is happening, we'll go ahead and, and show people what an actual deployment looks like and how easy that is. All right, so this is Zerto for migration. Uh, I want to be very clear. What you're seeing here is actually a limited non-public uh, this is something that we set up for testing uh, that I'm going to kind of show off. This will be available uh, to the public uh, sometime in the very near future after the point that we hold this webinar. So if you're watching this webinar uh, delayed, you know, maybe two, three weeks from now, uh, it's entirely possible that this will be absolutely public at that point in time and you can go out and find it on AWS. Um, we're really close. Uh, so this is what the listing is going to look like uh, when we actually go public with it. If you want to deploy Zerto directly, um, you click continue to subscribe. And that's gonna bounce us over to the agreement page. I have already accepted the agreement in this particular instance on my personal account with AWS for testing purposes. So I don't have to go through that part of it. It's very easy and our folks can walk you through it. Um, continue to configure. This is going to give you this is going to give you the beginnings of configuring for for Zerto, right? Uh, you select the fulfillment option. In this case, just leave it the sta uh, standard Zerto for migration. Um, you've got an option as far as versions with regard to AWS. Um, I recommend always selecting the newest version, and then of course the region that you want to deploy to. And for purposes of this demo, we'll be using U.S. East or Northern Virginia. And then just click continue to launch. At this point in time, uh, we've get an option. Uh, you can look at the usage instructions if you want to. Um, however, the cloud formation template is pretty straightforward, as you're going to see in just a second. We're going to use cloud formation template as our launch action. And I'm just going to click launch. This is where the cloud formation stack starts, right? And you're going to want to keep the defaults here because we've already specified a, a cloud formation template uh, for you to use, which AWS conveniently saves on a public S3 bucket for us. Uh, we're going to click next. Now I'm going to give it a stack name for you, AWS uh, veteran AWS guys out there. Um, 
you already know that you can't use anything but numbers and letters with a cloud formation stack. I continuously mess this up and try and put spaces in it because I'm a little retentive about that. Uh, but you've got to run everything together. Spaces are not a valid character in the stack name. Um, then we're going to set up our parameters. By default, uh, the CloudFormation template is going to default to an M6A large instance type for EC2. That's what we're going to deploy. Some regions do not have M6A. We will have at least one, maybe two or three other options here for you to pick, depending upon what region you're deploying to. The newer the region, uh, the more limited your, your options as far as what you can actually, what size you can deploy to. Um, but you can change that right there. Uh, you're gonna um, pick a key pair um, for connection to your EC2 instance. And then we're gonna determine the network configuration. This, is, this box is for creating and assigning an elastic IP. I'm gonna leave this false so that we assign a static IP in this particular instance. And for the most part, I would recommend assigning a static IP to your, to your Zerto instance. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna assign an IP address for connection to the cloud appliance. Um, this is where you start to tighten up on security with AWS. In this instance, I am simply going to put in all zeros uh, to make it easy to connect to the appliance. However, if you were connecting from an office and you know your IP address is going to remain fairly static um, for at, you know, from your location to the cloud, you would put in a fairly specific address or address range here. This is modifiable after deployment. You can go into your security settings and add multiple ranges. So let's say you're, you're a company who's got multiple people working on a migration or on your DR strategy and you all work from home so you have very disparate IP addresses or maybe uh, you work in different regions of the world so your IP addresses are crazy, crazy different. Uh, you can go and add all of that after the fact so that everybody's got access to things. <clears throat> Then we're going to go and assign VPC. Uh, I have only one in this particular account, so it's fairly easy. And then a subnet. And at that point in time, I click Next. Now I've got some options. These are not required things. These are things that you can add if they're, if they're things that you do in your specific environment, like adding tags. Um, I don't recommend adding more permissions or roles. We're going to take care of that for you with the cloud formation stack. Although if you've got something in particular that is necessary for your environment that you've got pre-configured, you can absolutely go in and find that um, and add that at this particular point. Your stack failure options, again, I'd leave the defaults in place. In fact, I pretty much leave the defaults on this page all the way down. And then I click next and we reach a review and create space. So you can review all of the settings that you've laid out and make sure everything is uh, as you thought you put it in rather than perhaps how it got fat fingered in and make sure I did this right, I did. Uh, we're good. We get all the way down to the bottom, this blue box is a requirement. It says, I acknowledge that AWS Cloud Formation might create an IAM resource with custom names. I'm gonna skip to the end here and kill the surprise for you and tell you that yes, we are absolutely creating IAM resources with custom names. Uh, we're not trying to hide it. We're gonna create a role and we're gonna give it very specific permissions to manage Zerto. Uh, that's the advantage of using a cloud formation stack is that you don't have to look at, or you don't have to go do that stuff manually. If you're curious about what we're doing, you can go look at the stack resources after deployment and see the complete list of everything we've given them. Uh, but just to go back and touch on it again, AWS has scanned this cloud formation stack ahead of time uh, to make sure that we are adhering to their best practice principles around um, minimum limited permission to get done what we need to get done. And then I just click submit. And at this point in time, it's gonna start the creation process. Uh, I've run through this a couple of times this morning. It takes about three minutes or so to complete the full deployment of this. When I am done, I will have an EC2 instance uh, running the Zerto uh, cloud appliance within AWS. And about 15 minutes after that, it'll finish its, its own internal setup and you'll be ready to rock and roll.
as far as beginning to configure your migration or your DR environment. Now I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to see where are we as far as our failover is concerned, Anthony? As far as our failover is concerned, I'm going to share it again. We're about 80% there, so it's, um, uh, but we are, it is running, so let me show you. Tell you what, why don't you, why don't you? Give them a quick look at how you set up the VPG. That's kind of where the magic is. Yeah. You talked for a second about orchestration. Orchestration. The orchestration is all in the configuration of what we call a virtual protection group. Right. And and when he set up that virtual protection group, he selected right. pre-selected a lot of the things that you might have to manually configure with a normal failover or migration. Yep. Um, and he can and run through that wizard real quick. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Bob. Right. It, and so, our, I mean, our test failover did happen. I want to show everybody super, super Ooh. fast that, um, uh, excuse me, if I can pull back up the AWS console, we see right here that turnkey FS is running. It's It has a little tag next to it with a name called testing recovery. So it's running, it's spinning up, it's spun up as our chosen EC2 instance. And I'll, I'll go into that in a second. Um, but again, right, it's running and it has not interrupted anything on premise. So you can see how everything looks in AWS, still keep everything on prem running good. And that's a nice little test before you start uh, the migration process itself. Now, to Bob's point, let's build a VPG, right? Maybe we should have started with that. But um, let's say I want to create, I want to move this virtual instance up to AWS. I will say, uh, let's say test VPG, we'll give it a nice name, click next. I uh, will choose an Ubuntu server that we have laying around here. Click next. We'll select AWS as our recovery site. Now this is where you can uh, do what's called tweak the journal settings. Zerto can uh, roll you back all the way up to 30 days you can set this to. So if you, for some reason, need to replicate that and re recover that far back or migrate, uh, you can with that extensive journal history there. Um, next, we're just, again, providing um, just sort, sort of volume sync types, a little more technical in terms of, um, you know, we kind of want this to always be continuously uh, replicating and syncing. We don't want to change that bad boy there. Um, but this is the main uh, crux of it, right? This is us choosing the settings. Um, and since you'll be deploying from the marketplace itself, a lot of this will already be easily uh, available for you and for you to select once you actually create a VPG itself. So from here, the which VPC network you'd be uh, replicating into from a failover or move perspective, or, or what we also like to recommend some of our uh, customers do is create a separate VPC subnet and isolated environment for the failover tests, just so you have that sort of bubble network uh, in AWS in case something happens. But again, you're choosing everything from uh, what network you're on, its subnet, what security group, um, you know, protecting those instances that will be uh, using it. Again, something most likely already provided within the CloudFormation template. Uh, and then this is really where you tell AWS, hey, uh, this, um, you know, this virtual machine really fits this type of uh, instance profile within your uh, services. So most likely general purpose, and then you have uh, all the sort of sizes of EC2 instances that you could use uh, to replicate this VM into AWS with. So you're telling AWS exactly what you want in terms of kind of like an order uh, sheet for this virtual machine, and Zerto is going to do uh, the replication on the back end uh, and move it to AWS within these uh, different um, settings that you put here. And you just simply click done and it would create a virtual protection group to do exactly what we did with this turnkey FS uh, VM itself. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, once you hit the, the test failover button, give it a few minutes to uh, uh, really give it some time to replicate to AWS itself. You can see if everything's working hunky-dory and then click the stop button. Uh, if it's a success, tag it as such. If there were some problems, again, you can go in, rectify. It, there's nothing uh, that you have to do manually in order to, once you hit the stop button, start stop breaking everything down, right? So Zerto right now is going into AWS, shutting down that EC2 instance, stopping it completely, 
um, and just reactivating everything as normal. And then at the end of everything, you get a nice report uh, with like a table of what uh, exactly happened, the total amount of time things took, where you replicated to, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So very hands-on um, uh, from um, you know a usability perspective, you know, is really just a few clicks in order to uh, kick off these operations. You're very flexible in terms of what you can choose uh, within AWS for you know your instance types. Um, and because you can sort of easily test this failover and fail back um, process, you're not having to worry about uh, interrupting your production time um, if you are trying to move stuff uh, in an efficient manner. To wrap that back into security just a little bit, consider for a moment if you're in the middle of some type of a ransomware event and you need to fail over to your AWS environment. Think about how quickly Anthony went in when we started this demo and went, I need to fail over here. I need to do this. I need to do this. Hit the done button and his failover was in process. You have yep. already started recovery at that point, right? I mean, that is how, that's how quickly it, it all comes together and it all happens when you need it the most. You're not worried about finding the run book to figure out which buttons to hit. It's very easy to do through this GUI. Yep. So from a security perspective, if you're worried about that kind of a thing, it's a quick, easy oh. step through process. Right. Yeah, look at that. And like, see, the, the failover now is, was, again, I stopped it. Nothing interrupted my production. We saw it go completely off our running instances in EC2. Um, so it's very, very easy <laughs> and automated for you. I mean, how great is that? <laughs> Yeah, that's really that's really impressive. You know, and so I mean that, that was it seemed like a great example there of of you know how, how quickly a customer could could replicate from on prem to the AWS cloud. What what were some of the design principles as far as you know like how long did this process take before you know how much time were you trying to save what, what kinds of processes were you, were you trying to eliminate here? Yeah, I think a the uh, the initial setup of a lot of the um, well, I mean, just a lot of guesswork, right? Uh, so well, you know, what the heck? How do I know which instance type to go into? Well, with Zerto, you're able to sort of make that selection ahead of time. Um, which virtual machines and do all these virtual machines need to be moved in a group together? Another benefit of Zerto itself, where something would be more manually um, in a uh, much more lift and shift sort of scenario. Uh, Bob, any other ones that, I mean, you think about the top of your head? Yeah, no, the one that came to, that came to mind first was kind of what you just touched on, and that's the, the virtual protection group. You've yeah. done most of the design work up front as far as this, this solution is concerned, either in terms of migration or in terms of an emergency failover event. So all of the virtual machines that are part of a specific application set are by and large going to be grouped together. Yep. And then you can orchestrate which you can determine which ones you have to have first. And they're just three clicks, you know, three button clicks to get a whole application back up and running in AWS. The design principle here, I guess, you know, what we were most worried about was making this easy in an emergency. Mm. I think where a lot of solutions fail is that in an emergency, they're not really that intuitive, that easy to yeah. use. Um, you're already worried about the fact that you're under some type of a threat. Your recovery from that threat needs to be as uncomplicated as it can possibly be uh, to speed the process up and save you quite literally millions of dollars uh, in terms of downtime and potentially in terms of lost data. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's, that's that's fantastic. All right. Well, before we get into audience questions, we've we've probably got time for for one last question here. You know, just in in our discussion. Um, so, you know, in your mind, what's the top thing that a customer should prioritize when creating a cloud footprint, and and where do you often see customers make the biggest mistake around that? Bob, you want to start with that one? Yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take that one. I think probably the biggest mistake I think I've, I've seen or that I see on a regular basis is that, is that there isn't a specific plan to begin with. They think, you know, I need to get into the cloud. 
but they don't sit down and go, why am I getting into the cloud? What am I going to get into right. the cloud and, and plan the whole thing out. And the next thing, you know, it's a little helter skelter. It's a little out of control and maybe it's a little more expensive than they meant for it to really be. And now they've got a bad taste about cloud. Um, that's not to be blunt. That's not AWS's fault. That's, that's absolutely, you know, the customer's fault for not stopping and thinking about what they want to do. Uh, and to tie that kind of back to security in Zerto, AWS makes a great place to use as your initial off-premise disaster recovery target. Uh, the amount of resources that are necessary from AWS is fairly small. Uh, so you can plan the whole thing out, design it to a very specific use case, and be uh, fairly economical about it as a first step into that cloud world and figure out exactly where you want to go with it from there. Yeah. All right. I, 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 that makes a lot of sense. I think it goes to the, right, like you said, Bob, the planning itself. And Zerto, um, from the movement perspective, can help with a lot of that. I think just being able to move instances and translate them into EC2 instances from on-prem is magic in itself and is quite easy, but to bring back your consumption model of uh, the cost reduction as well when you initially buy uh, these third-party services in AWS. Uh, it's a lot cheaper, it's uh, trusted technology, and it's easily available to you to get going uh, right off the gate. So um, yes, definitely something where people should um, adopt in the cloud, take a first look at. All right, yep, yeah, no, fantastic insights. Really appreciate that. Um, so uh, let's let's uh, switch over here and and uh, and see what questions the audience has for us. Okay, it looks like we've got a few um, already, and uh, we've got plenty of time. So if if you've got a question for Zerto, uh, type it in. Uh, but uh, Bob and Anthony, are you guys ready for some questions? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So uh, with the uh, the first one here with AWS as a DR target, do I need to have any EC2 instances already running before I can fail over? No, that's kind of the best. Oh, yeah, Bob, you want to take it? No, I was. Go ahead. You're fine. Yeah, <laughs> I think I already kicked it off there, right? Yeah, no, right. The best part is you don't already need these instances provisioned. There's nothing already running in AWS. Uh, the beauty of Zerto is that automation orchestration. So the second you hit that failure button, that move button, uh, it'll only then is when the VM is turned on and initialized. Yeah, the the only thing you've got running ahead of time in the cloud <clears throat> are the instances necessary to run Zerto, right? right. Just to be clear, you That's do have to have those. So you'll have you'll have a, a ZVM or a Zerto virtual manager. Zerto actually in the cloud we call it a cloud appliance. Uh, and a virtual replication appliance. So you'll have a couple of VMs running uh, just to handle the Zerto workload. But no, your actual workloads are are nothing but data, so they're not costing you anything. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, this next one, does Zerto have any immutability options for AWS? Um, and I'll, I'll direct that one to Bob uh, first, just to... <laughs> Nice. We're going to start refereeing. Good job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that way, we, that way, it almost, that way, it's not a NASCAR race, right? Um, <laughs> yes, we actually do have immutability options, although not in just your standard DR. We've got immutable immutability options in something that we refer to as extended journal copy, and effectively, it's a longer time frame. Um, uh, I don't know replication. How to, how would you put that, Anthony? A longer time frame in terms of, of hanging on your data. Well, yeah, what I would like to say is like if you grab a point in time copy of both the journal and your data, right? Whatever you have backed up in that, well, put in that VPG and it's pushed off to an S3 bucket where you can toggle immutability, archiving, right? Just tear it as you wish. Um, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, a it's a long, I like obviously it. what up to a up to a year currently is what it is. Right, exactly. You can basically, yeah, as long as you have Zerto set up, you can call that copy down um, from that immutable bucket for a whole year retention. We also have, also have incremental um, changes. So you can set the schedule to incrementally push off um, that journal copy as well as, you know, what's ever in there to that bucket. Um, and if it's immutable, obviously you're going to write over it. 
it's a storage bucket, it's S3 bucket, so you have a lot of storage space for fairly cheap. Um, so, yeah, definitely good cop, good um, thing if you need for, like, again, that last break the glass. I need to come back down from uh, a, a, a point in time copy that we've uh, selected. Okay, super. Uh, this next one, they're asking, can I replicate to two different AWS targets in different regions? So, uh, Anthony, you want to take first crack at that one? Yeah, absolutely. So, again, it's really wherever you spin up that ZCA, doesn't matter which region it is, uh, you can you know spin that up and pair it with Zerto. Zerto, um, for the virtual machines that you're protecting on-premise, uh, one to many can go to three different replication targets uh, for one virtual machine to be protected by that. So if you want to uh, set up a ZCA in two separate AWS regions, pair them to your site on-prem and replicate to both sort of in a staggered approach, it'd be a brilliant uh, sort of strategy. Okay. And next one, um, uh, Bob, they're asking, uh, how can Zerto use CDP for AWS if VMware's wears uh, VAIO API is only available for vSphere? <laughs> a lot of letters well, there. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of letters. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so the easy answer to that question is that we're not currently using uh, VAIO or VIO as, as VMware refers to it. We're not using Thank VIO. You. Or the VIO system on prem at the moment. So, Zero installs uh, a VRA on each individual host on prem, and that VRA is reading the data stream uh, using a filter driver of Zerto's own manufacture uh, within the system. <clears throat> and so, we're just reading the data stream and effectively right splitting the data stream. So, you've got one set of data uh, that's going directly to your local data store. And then a second set of identical rep, uh, replicated data going to AWS. And then the process actually goes through a right order fidelity check where we um, check some everything that's going to AWS against what has been written to the local data store. Not what's being transmitted locally or, or being you know in the data stream, but after it's been written to the local data store on prem, we do a uh, a checksum between the data on AWS and the data on prem to make sure there are absolutely no discrepancies. Uh, if any part of that right order fidelity check fails, the checkpoint gets tossed out. Uh, so <clears throat> we're constantly paying attention to the, in, the the integrity of the data that we're that we're moving. Um, and to circle back to the actual question, we're kind of functioning outside the VIO uh io system right now so it's not it's not really even a consideration in this in this circumstance okay excellent uh anthony next question i'll, I'll direct to you what kind of rpos can customers expect going from on-prem to uh you know up to aws yeah, definitely. So, I mean, we've seen the example of this taking just, you know, a couple you know, of minutes. And that's typically depending on really the size, right? As long as it's not an enormous instance, you're not pushing terabytes of data up to uh, an AWS EC2 instance, it's going to be very quick. So again, in our example that we ran, <clears throat> it was a fairly simple, like a file server Windows instance that uh, we replicated up to AWS, and that maybe took about five, 10 minutes overall. So you can expect that, again, on much lower um, sort of work processes that aren't that intensive. Uh, if it's an enormous instance, it will take a little bit more time. Wait, I, I think we're talking about R, RPO, right? Not, yeah. Not, yeah oh, recovery so, point. Yeah. Yeah, still, so was, yeah. Yeah. Seconds, because we're on-prem with a... So RPO is dictated in the Zerto world by your source material. In this case, the source material is on-prem right. with VMware. We are incredibly efficient on a VMware system. So you should have checkpoints in the 5, 8, 10, 12 second range consistently, even on AWS, because those checkpoints right. are generated from on-prem. Okay. Sorry, it's in the RTO. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I misheard. Yeah. No, no. I, 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 yeah. I knew what was going on, Anthony. I was just, just making sure we got the whole question. So we kind of, we kind of gave you bonus data there. <laughs> bonus yes, data. There I like go. it. 
Um, this next question they're asking, what differentiates Zerto from its competition in this space? I think just the journaling in itself um, and the efficiency and flexibility in order to do so, right? Again, I think through the demo, we showed a lot of that automation, automation and orchestration on the back end, um, a lot of the uh, sort of checking that you can do after you um, sort of, the you know, do that process itself. Uh, and I also think being part of the marketplace and being, again, co-architected or really designed with AWS first in mind makes us uh, a tool that not only is going to, again, allow for that scalability for disaster recovery or migration or whatever we're going to use for, um, but is also part of the AWS ecosystem and will be updated alongside all the other services within uh, AWS that it's using. So it's uh, it's you know built for AWS uh, for AWS. That's what I would say its main differentiator is. Yeah, and just to add to that, I, I <clears throat> Zerto is really the only solution that I'm aware of that is working at the application level. We're really designed to group your virtual machines together in an application grouping. So when you have to move uh, a whole application, you've got everything in one place. It's all orchestrated together. When you have an emergency, uh, an event that you need to fail over from you recover whole application sets together as a single unit. Everything with the same checkpoint, everything from the same moment in time. Uh, it allows for tremendous efficiency in terms of recovery. When everything comes up, it's ready to go. There is no manual syncing of databases with application sets on the back end. Uh, you've, you're, already, you're already in a production a mode, if you will, when you fail over to AWS because of the way we've grouped everything together. The other thing I'd throw in there is that <clears throat> there aren't any agents, uh, right? We work at scale without agents on your local virtual machines. So in terms of management of your virtual machines and even overhead in terms of running Zerto, it's an incredibly lightweight, easy to deploy, uh, quick to use solution as opposed to a lot of other things where you're dealing with scripting agent installs on every single virtual machine. Stop and think about a virtual machine state that has thousands of virtual machines and the pain that that might be uh, to get an agent on every single one. We just deploy virtual replication appliances on each individual host on-prem and we're off to the races. So uh, there are, we could sit here and talk for a while about distinguishing features between us and the competition. But I think those are the big ones between Anthony and I. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably an excellent place to leave it. Um, just, you know, Anthony, maybe, you know, if, if people want to get started, um, you know, with Zerto or, or find out more, do you have any next steps you'd recommend for them? Yeah, absolutely. I would definitely check out, I mean, literally just going to Google and type Zerto hands-on labs. Uh, sign up for our free hands-on labs. You can test both of these solutions for free. Uh, nothing that you have to install yourself. We'll give you a full dedicated environment so you can test replicating up to AWS and back, as well as Zerto in cloud for AWS. Um, so yes, please start there. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep, hands-on labs. Always, always uh, love to see those. Great. Well, um, Bob and Anthony, uh, thank you guys both. Uh, you know, appreciate your your patience with my questions and, and uh, all your insights here in the audience questions as well. Uh, it's been a great session. We really appreciate your time today. A lot of fun. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. And before we wrap up, we have one more piece of business, and that is the Amazon gift card prize drawing. And the winner of our $250 Amazon gift card today is Quinn Mchali from Ohio. So congratulations to Quinn Mchali. We'll be in touch to get you your card. And with that, on behalf of the actual tech media team, I want to thank Zerto again for making this event possible. And thanks as always for attending and for all of your great questions. That's going to conclude today's event. Have a fantastic rest of your day.